Hey, welcome back, everybody. Um, we are beginning our conversation about production costs today by looking at the cost curves and what goes into making them. So uh, our goal is to be able to define what a production function is and describe what the marginal product is measuring and be able to differentiate between what are known as fixed and variable costs, as well as being able to uh, begin explaining how we derive marginal cost, average total cost, average fixed cost, and average variable cost. I will say that this unit is extraordinarily important moving forward because we will continue to use these, these cost curves over the next two units as we look at perfect competition, monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic competition. And so this unit provides a foundation that will enable you to do analyses moving forward. So it's extraordinarily important that you get this uh, under your belts and that you, you know how to draw the curves and what they're telling us. So pay some particular attention over the next couple of lessons. We start with the production function and what the production function is showing us is the relationship between the inputs we put in and the output we get. As I put in, let's say, uh, more workers, how much can each of those workers add to the total amount? And generally speaking, total product increases, though it starts to increase at a decreasing rate. And there may be a time at which we start to actually have too many inputs and it causes total product uh, to fall. It's possible you could have, for example, too many workers trying to take care of uh, a, a field, right? If you're trying to tend corn or something and you've got thousands of people on one acre, that, that would be detrimental to your crop, all right? But generally speaking, we'll see total product rising just at a diminishing rate. When it comes to inputs, we, we generally talk about two different types. They're either fixed or they are variable. Fixed means we cannot change them in what's known as the short run. We are stuck with what we have for now. As long as I cannot change it, it's the short run. Then we can have variable inputs. Those can change, all right? So short run is when at least one variable is fixed. I should say when, when there's one input that is fixed minimum of one, we're in the short run. When all your inputs are variable, now we are in what's known as the long run. And the difference between those two will be important as we look at how markets adjust over time. The concept of marginal product is looking at how much does total product change when we add one more input. So for example, if I go from zero workers to one, I could go from zero bushels of wheat to 19. So that first worker's marginal product of labor is 19 bushels. If I go from one worker to two, the total amount of bushels of wheat that I have on my farm goes from 19 to 36. First person produced 19, which means the second person's contribution is 17. We see the change in wheat, 17, divided by the change in labor, which is one, so it's 17 over one, so the marginal product is 17. The third worker helps lead our production from 36 to 51 bushels, which means that third worker is adding 15 to the total. And like I said before, marginal product tends to diminish over time, which means that as we add more laborers, it becomes increasingly more expensive to produce the same increase in total. Right? If the first worker is adding 19, uh, to the total, and the second worker only adds 17, then if I want to add 19 total bushels, I have to hire a second worker and part of a third worker to get that same total increase in output. So that diminishing nature of marginal product does cause our costs of production to rise over time. So you should probably get a little bit of practice calculating marginal product. It's not hard, but again, like all things in econ, everything's at the margins. And so making sure you think in that marginal way uh, and getting practice at it is always helpful. So if we went from the third to the fourth worker, how much would marginal product increase by? If we went from fourth to fifth worker, how much would it increase by? Take a second and, and see if you can calculate those numbers. Just press pause, take a moment, and then press play and see if the numbers you came up with are correct. If you did this, you should see that the fourth worker adds 13, 11, 9, 7, 5. And we're just looking at the change in total divided by the change in inputs. And these are the numbers that we get. Now our costs are similar to our inputs. We have both fixed costs 
and variable costs. Fixed costs don't change during the short run. There is something that cannot be changed. We're stuck with it. That means we're in the short run. So fixed costs exist in the short run. In the long run, nothing is fixed. Everything is variable, so fixed costs would be zero. Variable costs are any sort of costs that can change over time. So, for example, if I run a store, say I run a restaurant, my rent is fixed. I sign a lease for, say, 12 months. I cannot, I could break the lease, I guess, but I'm not going to. Um, my rent is fixed. It's stuck. I can't change it until the contract is over. How many people I hire, the costs of the ingredients that go into making the food that I offer, the hours that I'm open, these are all things that are variable in nature. But when we add those two types of costs together, the fixed costs and the variable costs, and that tells me the total cost for my operation. And so a couple of things that you may notice here. First is that total cost is the sum of fixed and variable cost. Another thing to notice here is that if you get a table like this, and in the AP exam you may, they could ask you, what are the uh, fixed costs for this company? And the way to find the fixed costs is to look for where they produce nothing. Look for where quantity is zero and see what the cost is. In this case, they have to pay $400 even if they produce nothing. That is fixed. And you'll notice that the fixed cost never changes. The, regardless of how much I make, I have to pay $400. So that's our fixed cost. So if you're looking for how much is fixed, you look for where quantity is zero, and that'll be your fixed add fixed to variable together, and that gets you total. Marginal cost is the change in total cost over change in output or change in quantity. So this is measuring how much our costs are increasing as I produce one more unit of the good. So like all things marginal, it's about change. We look for the change in total cost. The total cost I had when I produced one item, look at the total cost when I produce two items, I subtract the two, that gives me the change in total cost, divided by the change in quantity, in this case it'd be one, tells me what the marginal cost is. How much did that second case of salsa, in this example, how much did that second case of salsa add to my total costs? Based on this chart, it looks like the second case of salsa increased the total cost by $36, whereas the eighth case is adding 180. And the reason why, again, is because marginal product is diminishing. In order to make eight cases of salsa, I had to increase the amount of inputs I was using, and each of those inputs was subsequently less efficient than the one before it. So my costs are rising as I produce more stuff. Again, you might want to get some practice calculating marginal cost. So here's another table for you. Again, I would encourage you to give yourself a shot at calculating these. It's not difficult, but the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. So go ahead and calculate these, press pause, and see if you got it right. Uh, when you're ready, go ahead and press play. So if you did the numbers um, correctly, this is what you should come up with. Average total cost is also an important number we'll be looking at. Average total cost is the sum of average fixed costs and average variable costs. So essentially what we're doing is dividing both sides of the equation by quantity to get averages. One thing we'll notice about average total cost is that it is sort of a U shape. It, it diminishes, it hits a minimum point, the minimum cost output, and then begins to rise again. Now the reason why it's sort of U shaped is because of two effects. One is called the spreading effect and the other is the diminishing returns effect. The spreading effect is talking about how uh, average fixed costs are diminishing rapidly. As we increase output, average fixed is falling by a large percentage um, and, and is rap rapidly, rapidly decreasing. So if average total cost is the sum of average fixed and average variable, and that average fixed number is falling quickly, then, um, even though average variable may be rising, the decrease in average fixed costs overwhelms the increase in average variable cost, and so our average total is actually getting less. However, there comes a point at which average fixed costs just aren't dropping very much. You know, if you go from one unit to two units, you're going to see your average fixed costs drop by 50%. But once you get up to 100 units, 200 units, one more 
case of salsa in this example is not going to drop the average fixed cost by very much, almost infinitesimally, because eventually average fixed cost approaches zero because fixed never changes. So as long as Q gets bigger, 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 that ratio is getting to be a smaller and smaller number and it approaches zero. So at some point, the spreading effect, while it's, it is, is important at the start, stops being important and becomes overwhelmed by what we call the um, diminishing returns effect, where because we have diminishing marginal product, it becomes increasingly more expensive to produce the next unit of output. So our variable costs rise. So the average variable cost is increasing, and that increase is a greater percentage change than um, the average fixed costs um, are diminishing by. And so now total costs are beginning to rise. So you do have this sort of U shape to the average total cost curve. And you might face a table like this, and this table sort of helps us bring this all together. Um, you've been given some information, but you sort of have to figure out how to fill in the rest. So um, I would encourage you to try and fill, figure this out on your own initially, um, pressing pause, working through it. When you're ready, press play again. And we'll talk through how to arrive at these numbers. These numbers are, are sort of normal for what we would expect and sort of show us how these curves are going to play out um, on a graph. So go ahead and press pause, and then when you're ready, press play. All right, so answering this question, we've got to calculate marginal product, which is relatively easy here because we can see that marginal product is the change in total product over the change in inputs. So when I go from zero workers to one, I go from zero brooms to 20. So that first worker is adding 20 brooms. When I go from one worker to two, that second worker is adding 30 brooms. The third one added 40, and we could chain, calculate the change moving forward. So we could fill in that column. Um, and there it is. Total costs. We had $200 in total costs when I produced nothing. So that is my fixed cost. So if I'm looking here at an average total cost of $15, then I would, um, I would say $15 on average to produce 20 brooms means that 20 times 15 gives me my total cost. It, it cost me $300 in total costs to produce those 20 brooms. 200 in fixed costs, 100 in variable costs. We could have also calculated variable costs by looking at the marginal cost per broom. Each of the 20 brooms the first worker produced cost $5 a piece. So $5 times 20 gives me $100 in variable costs. Now that I know that it's $100 in variable costs, um, each worker is, we're assuming each worker will be paid the same amount. So the first worker cost me $100, the second worker is going to cost me an additional $100. The third will cost me an additional $100, so we can add 100 to our total costs here because now I know my fixed cost plus my variable cost per worker. Once I have my total costs, filling in the rest of this is just math. If it's $400 in total costs and um, producing 50 brooms, that means that on average, each of those 50 brooms cost me $8. How much did each of those 30 brooms add? to my total? Well, I would take the $100 change in total cost divided by the uh, 30 broom change in quantity, 100 divided by 30, gives me $3.33. So I can calculate marginal cost moving down, looking at the change in total cost divided by the change in output, which is our marginal product. You'll notice when you look at these results that both the average total cost curve and the marginal cost curve tend to have a sort of U shape. They both diminish initially and then begin to rise over time. And so that reality is borne out when we draw these on a graph. We'll have the marginal cost curve traditionally sort of drawn as a swoosh. We're seeing that it's going down initially because as workers become specialized, they become uh, more efficient and their costs drop. They're sort of increasing marginal product to start. Once diminishing marginal product kicks in, the marginal cost curve begins to rise. So the only relevant portion of this marginal cost curve is the upward sloping portion of it, but we do trend, traditionally sort of draw it as a swoosh. The average variable cost curve is a U. The average total cost curve is a U. You'll notice that the average variable cost curve approaches average total cost 
because the, the distance between the two, the difference between average total and average variable cost is our average fixed cost. As average fixed costs, uh, as we produce more stuff, average fixed cost approaches zero. So the difference between these two curves rapidly diminishes and they, they approach but never intersect each other. One way to keep in mind the labeling on this is uh, to look at these letters and to remember the phrase, I want my MTV. The Dire Straits put out a song about wanting their MTV. And so we've got marginal cost, total cost, variable cost. So in order, MTV. The other thing you'll notice is that marginal cost passes through the minimum point of both average total cost and average variable cost. Why? Well, in part because uh, of math, really, is what it is. If you think about your grade point average for a second, if you had a, a 4.0 coming into taking AP Economics, and then you get a B in AP Economics, a good grade but not a 4.0, then the the grade point average is all of your classes averaged together before you took this class. AP Economics is the marginal impact on your grade. If the marginal impact is less than your previous average, that draws your average down. And the closer your marginal change is to your previous average, the closer together they get. If you had a 4.0 in this class and you got an A, it would be the same. Right? There'd be no change because when you add that A into your grade point average, you still end up with a 4.0. If, however, you came into the class with a B average, and then your marginal impact, your, your grade in this class was an A, then that would raise your average up. And so uh, that's what's going on here. When the marginal cost is less than the previous average, it's drawing the average down. When the marginal cost of producing something is greater than the previous average, it's drawing the average up. When the two numbers are equal, there is no change. So the marginal cost curve will always go through the minimum point of both the average total cost and average variable cost. We'll work more with these cost curves next time, and I'll talk to you then.